What's going on guys? Welcome to the Sabob Show. I appreciate you being here more than you know. And today we got another mock draft for the 2023 NFL Draft. We are getting close, less than two weeks away. I am very excited. We're going to get right into it. I'll talk a little bit as I go, but no need for a long introduction. First overall pick is uh, up in the air. Two weeks ago, everyone was penciling in CJ Stroud with an off chance of Anthony Richardson. Really seems like it's going to be Bryce Young now, and that's what I'm going to go with. He has been my number one player on the board, number one quarterback for the entire process. Um, I, I just He's the best quarterback in this class, and I get the size concerns, but great player. I don't think anyone's going to be mad about that pick. Also, my big board is under my face cam. It should be at least. Uh, I got that finalized, so I'm going to put that in the video. Let me know any feedback, if that looks good, if I should move it, if I should just take it out completely. But I just thought having it there for reference might be nice. So, All right, moving on to Houston at number two. And again, this was penciled in as Bryce Young since damn near like November. And uh, doesn't look like it's going to be that, um, obviously, if Carolina takes him. But a lot of people don't even think it's going to be quarterback. And I'm one of those people right now that is kind of drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm believing those rumors a little bit. It is lying season. This could all be bullshit. For all we know, Carolina could take CJ still. Bryce Young still the pick. Or they could they could take fucking whoever. We, they could love Will Levis. We don't know. But as it stands right now, I'm going to go Will Anderson, who is my favorite defender in this draft. I think he is a phenomenal player. There is a chance... That they uh, take Tyree Wilson, I think. I'm a little bit tempted to do that. I've heard from some people that they like Wilson. I don't I don't see it. I love Tyree Wilson. He's one of the highest players on my board as well. He's obviously a very good player. I don't see putting him over Will Anderson in the slightest, but there are a little bit of whispers that he might be the first edge taken, so take everything with a grain of salt, though. Again, this time of year, we're going to hear some shit that sounds like no way, and it happens. And vice versa. We'll hear some shit that sounds like that's what's going to happen. And it was never had a bit of truth to it. So Arizona at three is where I'm going to do my first trade. And I think a lot of people are trading here. Now, I will say I did this mock draft before I started recording. I knew what I was going to do, but uh, accidentally hit back and deleted the entire thing. So I don't have it in front of me. I may forget a thing or two and freestyle a little bit, but I've got a good idea where I'm going with this one. So, uh... I want to have the Raiders trading up. Don't know why I clicked off of Houston there, but it doesn't really make a difference. Oh, because I don't need Houston. Um, where? Okay, there we go. All right. Again, for trades, I, I don't know what the exact... I don't know what it'll be. I'm just throwing stuff in until it lets me. How is that not enough? Okay. Well, that's a lot... A lot, a lot of capital. It'll probably be less than that. Oh, I didn't even throw in another first. That's why. I'm an idiot. But, okay. It'll probably be this year's first and next year's and a third or something to move up to third overall and the Cardinals will throw in a fifth. Something like that. But trade details aren't perfect. The Raiders are going to move up, though, with uh, the Houston passing on C.J. Stroud. Somebody's probably going to try to leapfrog my Indianapolis Colts to get him. And uh, as much as I want to just say, no, the Cardinals will stick and they'll take Tyree Wilson or whatever, um, I don't think it'll happen. I'd probably like the Colts to trade up, throw some picks just to swap to three to make sure they get one of the top three guys and potentially Stroud if the Texans take Anderson. But, you know, I can't always do what I want to happen in the mock draft. <clears throat> Pardon me. But that leaves Indianapolis here with uh, a choice between Anthony Richardson and Will Levis. Uh, I think nowadays the consensus leans Richardson. Uh, I've been higher on him for a long time. He is one of my favorite players in the draft. Obviously a big roll of the dice, but it's hard not to get enamored with what he could be. Shane Steichen would probably like a guy like him in his system to, uh, you know, tune him up. He doesn't got to start right away. They signed Gardner Minshew, but even if he does start, I think he'll get it worked out. And uh, seems like a good dude from all his interviews. A Tribune he posted the other day was great read. So I like Richardson. I think the Colts would too if this were the situation. Now on to Seattle. I think uh, the next two teams actually, Seattle and Detroit, are a little bit of a outside chance of taking quarterback. I don't think either of them do now. But if Richardson or even Stroud were to somehow make it here, maybe they do. Or maybe one of these teams sneakily trades up to three if possible to jump Indianapolis and the other. Uh, 
I didn't do that here, but I do not think it's impossible. But for Seattle in this situation, I'm going to take Jalen Carter. Uh, fifth overall, if I would have told you a couple weeks ago they got him fifth overall, or a couple months ago, rather. Uh, it sounds crazy. He's probably the best player in this draft. Um, there's just been a lot of red flags, man, and he's supposedly not doing great in interviews. He showed up overweight to his pro day. Uh, couldn't even finish because of cramps, and then obviously the legal issues. There's just a lot of... Probably feel more comfortable taking Will Anderson now. And the quarterbacks will go before, obviously, because they're quarterbacks. But at five, if I'm Pete Carroll and the Seahawks, I'm taking him and saying we can get this guy to focus on football and get his shit together, and he's going to be a phenomenal player. So now Detroit at number six. This is where I kind of defer from what a lot of people are doing. I think Devin Witherspoon is the consensus pick here. They traded Akuda, kind of ending all the they might go D-line, I think, all that's over. They're probably going to get the corner they want in this draft now. And uh, to me, it's Christian Gonzalez. I like him a lot more than most people do. If you look at my big board, he is very high. I have him uh, one of the highest graded players. This big board I have down here is considering positional value. But if, if you take positional value out of the equation, I think he's like my fourth highest graded player in this entire class. I really, really like Gonzalez. And I think he is one of the players... Uh, Close to like Jalen Carter, Will Anderson level for me, where I think he's pretty sure fire going to be great and has a chance to be a gold jacket guy if all goes well and he stays healthy. He just has what it takes for me. He's just so fluid. He's a quick. He's got the size you like, coverage skills. I I really like Gonzalez and Witherspoon's great too. He's very high on my board as well, but I just prefer Gonzalez in this situation. Pardon me. I'll take some water real quick. All right. Now, Arizona traded down to seven and still going to get a guy they would have considered at three and probably even selected in Tyree Wilson, who uh, his tape was impressive for me. I I liked him a good amount, but the more I watch his tape, man, he just he's raw for sure, but he's got something in him. He looks like Miles Garrett if he uh, wasn't as good at football to me. I mean, he's big, strong, freak, long arms. He just bulldozes people, man. He disruptive player I really like Tyree Wilson and if he uh I'm not saying he doesn't know how to play football he's not that raw where he's just clueless and he's nothing but muscle but uh he's definitely not Miles Garrett coming out of college but he he's got that potential in there somewhere I truly do think so I'm taking him here and then Atlanta is going to take Devin Witherspoon who a lot of people don't think will be available to them he very well might not be and I think they'd be very happy with this pick. This is a team I think looks at Levis and thinks, hmm, maybe we should take this guy. But they've stated they're comfortable starting Ritter for a year unless they can get uh, one of these top guys with Stroud or Young, I think is kind of how most people feel. Those are the, the two guys you're very confident in this year. But those guys aren't going to be available. Maybe they make a trade up to three. But I'm going to pass on Levis for now. Uh, Chicago, this is an interesting one where... I think receiver and tackle are kind of where most people want to go here. Maybe edge rusher. There's uh, just not one that I love here. And uh, I'm going to go with offensive tackle. I think they've needed help on the O-line for a while. They have their pick of the litter here, so I'm not going to pass on it. Pardon me. But uh, if you look at my big board, I have Broderick Jones as my number one offensive lineman. I really like him. But I think him and uh, Paris Johnson are neck and neck. They are very, very close to my grading skill. I think Paris Johnson is a little bit more ready, and Broderick Jones has a little bit more potential. I tend to lean potential when they're close because I, I like to shoot for the stars. But I think Chicago is kind of going all in and wanting to have a little more success this year than some people might think they will. So either way, can't really go wrong. Like I said, both very close for me. But I'm going to go Paris Johnson here. I think he's the more ready player. And that leaves Philadelphia on the board at 10, and this is where things get weird. Uh, trades are hard to predict, man. You never really know what's going to happen, but I'm going to trade down here. And uh, I think Howie is a guy that if he doesn't love someone on the board, he's going to trade down. I considered Brian Branch here. They lost C.J. Gardner-Johnson, and I am a big, huge fan of Branch. But I think it might be a little rich. He might go a little later than this. So, uh Tampa Bay is going to be trading up. And if you cannot guess, again, the change is not perfect. It's just uh, going to make it go through. But uh, this is where I'm going to pencil in Will Levis. Oh, I'm still on tackles. 
He makes it inside the top 10. I think he's still a very good prospect. Um, I think I've got him in the top 10 on my big board right at 10. This is right where he goes. Uh, obviously, I think he's a pretty decent tier below the other QBs, but he's got the potential. He's got the size. He's got the traits. He played in a pro-style offense. He's already experienced all the terrible offensive line and receivers and everything there. He's not The game's not going to be super fast to him in the NFL. He's ready to play more than people give him credit for, but I think this is... Uh, I'd be more comfortable taking him around this range than I would in the top three, four picks. Pardon me, but uh, I think Tampa is a team that could take their shot on a guy to replace the GOAT. Uh, yes, Brady is there. Or not Brady, pardon me, Baker. But is that... Uh, Permanent? Probably not. Now, on to Tennessee. This is a team where maybe would have taken Will Levis if he was there. Maybe wouldn't have. Houston, same thing. Here at 12, they did not take a quarterback at second overall. Maybe they would have taken one at 12 if they made it. They also are a team that sneakily may try to trade into the top 10 to get a quarterback and Will Anderson. But Tennessee is going to go with Broderick Jones here for me, who, uh, again, was my favorite offensive lineman this year. Very, very close to Paris Johnson, but uh, they need left tackle help. Broderick Jones can provide that and be a franchise guy. Don't think it too much. This one's where people are probably going to disagree with me a good bit. With Houston, I'm going receiver, which I don't think that's where people will disagree with me. Uh, I'm going Jordan Addison. He is my number one receiver this year, and I know it's a little bit crazy to say for most people. Uh, JSN had the production. I... And I'm very high on the top four receivers. I'm not dissing anybody, but I think Jason is a slot guy for sure, and that's okay. He's still going to be a very good slot guy. But for Houston, I think I want a dominant outside receiver if possible here. And uh, if you think that, you think Quentin Johnston, right? He has the potential to become that, but he's got a lot he needs to work on still. He's probably the only guy that has a chance to become a true, true alpha receiver in this class, but I think Jordan Addison can do he reminds me a bit of Calvin Ridley watching Jordan Addison play. He's just so crafty. Obviously, he was great at Pittsburgh. Transferred to USC. He was a little bit underwhelming, but still put on some good tape. I really like him as a player. Higher on him than most people are. He's one of my top 10 players on my entire board. So, Addison, I think, is a good pick here for them. Just adding talent where they can. Probably going to stink next year as well and get a quarterback. In that loaded class we have coming up. I say that every year, though. We'll see. Um... The New York Jets, Peter Skaronsky, man, it's a boring pick. Jets fans, I'm sorry. I know you guys probably don't have too much fun watching mock drafts this year. Seems like that's always the pick, but it just makes too much sense to change. Pardon me. Now, New England, I am going to take Jackson Smith and the Jigba. Very good player. Obviously, as I said, limited to the slot, but does not matter. He is very agile, has good footwork, and he gets open, man. He's reliable. I think he will be a very good slot receiver at the next level. And people throw around the word slot like it's a derogatory term. I mean, there's like Keenan Allen, Amon Ross, St. Brown. There are guys in the league that are very good receivers at the slot. It doesn't matter where they line up. If they're going to get open, catch the ball, and score points, you don't give a damn where they're lining up. And that's what JSN can do. Now, quick run on receivers. I'm going to go with Quentin Johnson here. I thought about going defense, but again, I mentioned Quentin Johnson has that after-the-catch ability, the size, speed to be a true dominant wide receiver one for a team. And I think the Packers could use that. Christian Watson had a promising rookie year. They've got some guys there, but I think Quentin Johnson could be the, uh, end up being the Devonte Adams to Jordan Love. Not quite Devonte Adams, but you know what I mean? Reliable number one target that can really, really do something for you on offense. Pardon me again. Uh, Washington, this is a pick I went back and forth on. Uh, I might ask my brother, he's a Washington fan, what he prefers, but he's not home right now. So I ended up going with Brian Branch, which might seem a little bit different. I don't know that I've seen other people doing that. I think they do need secondary help. Cameron Curl's a very good safety. Derek Forrest did good this year. So I don't necessarily think they have to go safety. That's why I was leaning corner. Joey Porter was here. Uh, they could keep <clears throat> Deontay Banks close to home. But I am higher on Branch than most people are. He's a true Swiss army knife on the defense. He could play anywhere in the secondary and hold up, in my opinion. But even if they play him at the nickel instead of deep safety, make him a box safety, they could make him play deep safety. Whatever they want to do with him, great player, going to improve your secondary immediately, a leader on the team, and good tackler. I, I like Brian Branch quite a bit. Now on to Pittsburgh. This is one of those picks that uh, I just feel 
gut feeling about. Darnell Wright is a Mike Tomlin tackle, and I think he is going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler, even though I think it's a bit of a reach here for me. Uh, he's still a good player, going to be a good right tackle in the league, in my opinion. Now the Lions at 18. This is another one where things get a little bit interesting. I'm going to draft Bijan Robinson. And initially, early in the process, I was so against going offense for the Lions. I was they got two first rounders, their defense sucks, their offense is great. Fix the defense as best you can, get some defenders on that team. But I got Christian Gonzalez, top six, I think can change that secondary. Bijan Robinson, man, is just Overall, by grade, I gave him the highest grade out of any player in this entire class. I don't think I'm alone in that assessment. He is a wonderful player. His jump cut is so fascinating to watch. Bijan's going to be a special, special player. And I understand DeAndre Swift was taken high a couple years ago. Still young, still got potential, but his vision has not been good. And frankly, he's not been healthy. He's getting out-touched by Jamal Williams last year, who left. So now I think B. John Robinson can come be the bell cow for that offense and truly make them damn near unstoppable. Now, Philadelphia traded back to the spot and gets a player that I am high on in Nolan Smith, who I think a week or two from now when we get to draft day could end up going top 10. Like I, I could see him going as early as like 8 to the Falcons, but I'm, I'm very high on Nolan Smith. Obviously, he's light, but... The dude's athletic. He produced. He's a great player. I like Nolan Smith quite a lot. Now, Seattle at 20. This is another one where I went back and forth on a few things, but I like Miles Murphy. He's here. I'm just going to take him. You need edge help. You already got Jalen Carter. Fuck it. Beef up that D-line if you can. Get two great prospects. The defense needs help. That's the way to do it. Now, on to the Chargers. This is another one where I considered Kalijah Kansi here. They obviously... Missed on Tillery a few years ago, ended up cutting him and still haven't really found their permanent guy in the middle of the defensive line. Cansey could be that guy, but I think receiver help is a little bit more necessary right now. Keenan Allen, still a good player, but if you watched him last year, losing that explosiveness, you could tell his age is getting to him. He's, he's so slow after the catch. He's probably not got too much longer in him, and Mike Williams, we all love Mike Dub, is not known for making separation. We need a guy that can make separation, get downfield quick, and be a reliable target for Herbert. That is Zay Flowers, a wonderful prospect in my opinion. I really like him. And uh, I could see him going as the first receiver off the board. I would not be surprised. All these top four receivers are very close for me. I think they're all right next to each other on the big board. So, again, really good player. I think he's the last of the great receivers, though. Probably the last of the ones I would take in the first round. Which leaves Baltimore picking here. And I want to take Banks and uh, keep him in Maryland, but I think Porter is a bit of a better player. So I'm not going to get cute. I'm just going to take Joey Porter Jr. here. They need corner help. He's a good corner. Probably would have liked to get a receiver, but they signed OBJ, so it's not as dire of a need now. Bateman will be back from injury, but uh, I think corner there makes sense. Now, with Minnesota, this is one where kind of considered going can see, but Banks just makes sense. I think this is a team that that really needs corner help. I feel like we say this every offseason, but Minnesota, they're going to need to hit one of these first-round corners, and Banks could be that guy. So now Jacksonville. This is one of the picks that I truly stared at for like 10 minutes. I don't know. I don't love this spot, which typically I'd be like, oh, then you know, trade on down and get some draft capital. But I don't know who's on the board here that somebody would trade up for. I, I don't see anybody here that is really worth spending extra capital to go up and get that you don't think might fall to you a few picks later. So I'm going to go with best player available. I like Evan Ingram. I'm not. I've been against going tight end for the Jaguars, but Ingram might not be there for a whole lot longer. Michael Mayer is the best player on my board. And the reason I justify this is they also need a little bit of help on the offensive line. And Michael Mayer can be an extension of that O-line and uh, be a reliable Target, move the chains, probably catch a touchdown or two, but also he just helps in the run and pass game blocking-wise so much. He changes that dynamic a lot. So uh, I'm not drafting him to be an elite receiving tight end, which he can be a high-end one, but he's also going to help the blocking on my team a lot. Now on to the New York Giants. This is another one where there's not any receivers I love here. Um, as I mentioned, Josh Downs, Josh Downs, pardon me, is the next guy on my board. He's in my top 30 players, but we're only 
I mean, it's not a huge stretch right here, but I wouldn't be as comfortable. They traded for Darren Waller, which helps the receiving room a little bit. So I'm just going to go with Cyrus Torrance. They need interior help, and I like him quite a bit. He's a, easily my favorite interior guy unless Skaronski ends up getting moved inside. So go ahead and snag him. You can never really go wrong building up the trenches. And now with Dallas, this is where I did take Kalaja Kansi. Very good player. They need help on the interior D-line. Undersized, but we've heard undersized Pittsburgh defensive tackle before, have we not? No, he's obviously not Aaron Donald. But I think he's a good player. Can penetrate well. He's uh, athletic, quick. I like Kansi quite a bit. I think he's worth a first-round selection for sure. Now on to Buffalo. This is one of those ugly picks where I'm looking at this board like, man, I would have liked Torrance quite a bit, maybe even to the point where I would trade up for him. If I'm, Maybe that's what I could have done. If the Jaguars wanted to trade back, Buffalo could have thrown a pick or two to go up and make sure they snagged Torrance if they felt he was in danger of going before them. But uh, I didn't do that, so now I'm looking at this board, and I'm just not seeing anything I love. I consider Josh Downs here. I... There's not really any interior guys I like. John Michael Schmitz is not my favorite. Steve Avila is good, but again, this is rich for him. Pardon me, but uh, I ended up just going Darnell Washington, which is an odd pick, I understand. But I really am higher on him than most people are. He's probably my BPA right here. And uh, I think his potential, he's obviously a monster human, huge. He's a good blocker, a willing blocker. He's vicious and he has the upside he did not get many targets last year i think only had like 400 receiving yards uh at georgia but the the potential there with him he's a freak athlete there were sometimes after the catch where he's just impossible to take down he hurdled people last year he's just a freak so i think darnell washington could be a guy that if he develops right and gets the usage people are like holy shit how did a guy like that built like that and that athletic make it all the way down to pick 27 so I'm going to go ahead and take him and hope I can develop him into that. But uh, Cincinnati, I'm going to go Anton Harrison. Didn't quite make my top 32 big board, but he is graded as a fringe first rounder, early second priority pick on my scale. And uh, that's what this is, fringe first. There's only three more picks in the first round. So don't mind taking him here. It's a position you really need help at, and I think he's a good player. Now, New Orleans, this is where I finally took Brian Brzee. I think this is... A bit of a fall for most people. Uh, I see him going higher than this usually. I am not as big of a fan of his as most are. I think what we saw pre-ACL tear was great. His size is good. His athleticism is good. I know he had a lot going on with his sister and all sorts of things this year. So, And he was coming off the ACL tear. He very well could be that player again one day, but we don't know for sure. Maybe the ACL is what set him back and he's going to look like he did this year forever. And if that's the case, I do not want to draft him in the first round. So I'm taking him here, hoping he can become what we used to have in him. So it's a little bit of a risk in my opinion, but I'm willing to take it for a guy with that kind of ceiling. Now, with this pick for Philadelphia, I went ahead and I think I grabbed Cam Smith. I like him better than Forbes. Emmanuel Forbes, one guy I'll mention because he's not going to go in this draft. I like him a lot. When I do a two-round draft, he will definitely go within the next couple picks, but we only got one more pick left today. I think he is a very talented player. He's got a nose for the ball. He has the most pick sixes in college football history. He's a little Trayvon Diggs. Like, what people think Trayvon Diggs is, is what Emmanuel Forbes is, except for he's super, super light as well. He's like 160 pounds. So... It worries me that his size, I mean, you put him across from guys like A.J. Brown or D.K. Metcalf, he's just not going to be able to win. And there's nothing against that. I mean, I, I understand he's a good cover corner. He's got a nose for the ball. He makes plays. But I prefer Cam Smith because I'm more comfortable in his ability to cover guys in man. And Forbes will probably succeed at some team that runs zone-heavy schemes and allows him to be his aggressive self and make plays. But for Philadelphia right here, I think Cam Smith is a bit safer. Now, Kansas City is my last pick. Sorry if you guys can hear my dogs. Uh, I'm going to go Will McDonald, who I think is a very good edge prospect. I like him a lot. Over Lucas Van Ness, I understand. That's probably, if anything, uh, what people are confused about. I'm just not as high on him as most are. I think he is worth taking in the next couple picks here. 
probably a top 10 pick in the second round. He would probably go in the first round. I understand that. But if I was making the selections, he probably would not. I think he's a, a guy that didn't even start at Iowa, but he had some good reps. He has potential. He's big, strong, and athletic. I just, he just bull rushes a lot and he beats people with his strength. And I don't know that he is going to be that phenomenal at the next level. Um, I'm not going to go on a huge tangent about it. If you want to see what I think more in depth, I've written long reports on all these players on my Instagram. Uh, it's at StabobYT, my TikTok I post as well. Same at. I appreciate you guys being here, though. Thank you very much. It's going to wrap up my first round. I can go scroll back through it real quick. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate you being here. More mock drafts coming soon. I'll probably have one more before my final one. The final one will uh, probably be posted the morning of the draft, if I had to guess. We'll be live during the draft, streaming my reaction. I'll be with my friends and all that, having a party. But very excited. Thank you guys for watching once again. And if you are interested, I have a mock draft challenge going on on my Instagram, at StabobYT. Submit me a mock draft, first round only, and there's a scoring and everything is on my Instagram. Whoever wins, it's $10 to enter, but they win a jersey of whoever their team selects. So anyways, make sure to like the video, subscribe for more, and let me know what you thought of your team's pick. Even if you hated it, let me know. I like to talk football, and I take criticism well. So let me know. I appreciate it. You guys have a good one, and enjoy the rest of your day.